Early signing period begins today, so we're gonna catch up on what USC and UCLA have, and what they're gonna to need to complete their rosters for next season on football. Matthew Stafford earned a Lombardi trophy, and apparently Matthew Stafford's wife is trying to earn a Pulitzer. The Chargers can clinch a playoff spot this weekend. We'll tell you how. Hi. I'm James. This is your Daily Dose of Sports and Snart for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is December 21st, 2022. I am in Anchorage, Alaska again. Craziness. Cold as hell. Not looking forward to it. But what the hell, while I got the chance, we'll talk a little bit about LA sports. If you like the content that we put out, you can click the like button. Click it to click the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. For bleep's sake, I'm in the snow. You may as well say hi. Before we go through the news and notes from around LA, quick look at the scoreboard. Last night, four different Kings scored. And the LA Kings win their third game in a row. This time, four to one over Anaheim. Didn't need to go to a shootout this time. Busy day today, by the way, in L.A. The Lakers are playing at Sacramento. That's at 7 o'clock. The Kings, the Sacramento version, are 2-0 and against L.A. this year. Charlotte's at the Clippers at 7.30. You know, the Clippers are seventh place in the Western Conference, but they're only two and a half games out of the top spot. Go figure. USC Davis is coming to play UCLA, 13th ranked UCLA this afternoon. Jaime Jaquez Jr. is the Pac-12 Player of the Week. And USC is traveling to Colorado State at 8 o'clock. The Trojans are on a five-game winning streak. Let's chat up a little football. As mentioned, today is national early signing period. And so it's a huge day for both the Trojans and the Bruins. Now, the Trojans have already gotten themselves off to a fantastic start. They have three five-star prospects committed. That is the most the program has had since 2017. Most of the crews that they have overall are offensive-oriented, including the number one prospect in the entire nation and Los Alamos high quarterback, Malachi Nelson. But what about the defense? And for that matter, what about both lines? Because the Trojans, for example, on the offensive line, they're going to be losing three starting offensive linemen. Well, let's start off with a little look at the defense. We do know that they have four-star linebacker Tackett Curtis, the player of the year out in Louisiana. He was described as, quote, a guy who would play early for Pete Carroll, unquote. So... The idea of him stepping in at USC and making a difference on a defense that needs difference makers, should be pretty optimistic about that. USC is also set to sign five offensive linemen led by a four-star linebacker in Elijah Page. Again, very much necessary because the Trojans are losing three offensive linemen. The class overall currently ranks 13th, but again, there is work to do, the defensive line in particular. Over at UCLA, by the way, the reverberations of landing number three overall prospect in the nation, quarterback Dante Moore of Michigan, they're just rattling across the land. There's a recruiting analyst who spoke with the LA Times about it, said that it radically changes the Bruins recruiting class, quote, and I don't know how you can overstate that. It puts UCLA on the map, unquote. So what do the Bruins have? We already know that the Trojans need offensive line help and defensive line help. The class that the Bruins are bringing in, they have a couple of wide receivers. Both wide receivers coming in are four-star recruits. But like USC, the Bruins' offensive line is in a world of hurt. They're going to need some help. In addition to that, give UCLA credit for USC definitely over one thing. The Trojans, they've accepted a lot of former Arizona players. The Bruins are raiding Oregon. So if you're gonna steal somebody, at least steal from a program that you know you can trust, the Oregon Ducks. Tight end Maliki Matavao, Matavo, 
is coming to UCLA. He's also a four-star recruit. He is the seventh transfer in the portal coming into UCLA, the second from Oregon. He's a tight end. He's, he was highly recruited, but he didn't make much of an impact in his first two years up with the Ducks. He only caught 19 passes in two years. Now, I'm not going into the names of the potential signing rumors because these are only high school kids. Don't even know if they're adults yet. And I really don't want to have comments on people who, for all I know, are still 17 and younger. Do you really want to spend a lot of time judging the mental acumen of life decisions for 16 and 17 year olds? I don't. So we're just going to move on and see how everything shakes out. Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford has uh, taken the rumor and squashed it. He will return for 2023. How do we know? He told his wife on her podcast, gee, what a scoop, ma'am. How'd you go out and rattle the sources to get that little news nugget to fall out of the tree? Everybody has a podcast. I want to have a podcast. How many NFL quarterbacks do you think if I could wind up getting to know if I had a podcast? Of course, I'd have to procreate with them, but that's another story. Stafford says uh, he is expected to avoid surgery on his spinal cord. That's from both him and coach Sean McVay. The Rams are only the third Super Bowl champ this year to start four different quarterbacks. The last one came back in 1987, the New York Giants. Now the Rams don't have a first round pick, so at some point we're gonna to have to wonder how this team is going to rebuild without use of high draft picks. I can also tell you that they're, you know, one, they have a problem at defensive back. Multiple DBs are gonna be free agents this off season. By my count, only Jalen Ramsey is signed for next year. So I would expect a lot of restructuring of contracts, but I'm not sure Aaron Donald will actually be on board with that. We'll have to find out. The Chargers can clinch a, play, a playoff berth as early as Sunday. According to the New York Times, the Bolts will reach for the first time since 2018, this weekend under the following conditions. They have to win, plus, losses by the Jets, Patriots, and Raiders. The Chargers have an 81% chance of making the playoffs overall, according to statistical analysis from The Athletic, by the way. Scribes surrounded LeBron James, as scribes are so wont to do, and they asked him about Laker trade plans, to which he replied, quote, go ask Rob Link of those questions, unquote. And I'd really like to thank LeBron James for saying that. Because after all those irresponsible rumors you read online, it, the least you can do is not add fuel to the fire. I really appreciate that. The trade deadline, by the way, in the NBA is on February 9th. In a side note, LeVar Ball also said something about the Lakers, but let's be real, that dude's just a glorified Little League dad, so I didn't even bother to read it. LeVar Ball. Why anybody even bother to stick a microphone under that dude's self-glorifying cake hole is beyond me. Are the LA Clippers finally getting healthy? Coach Ty Lu said the entire roster was finally able to practice yesterday. They rarely do it. Somebody's always off getting therapy whether it's musculature or whether I, I don't know, they're talking about problems with their mom and dad when they were kids, I have no idea. But for whatever reason, the Clippers never get to practice as a full unit. So then the follow-up question, isn't that great? I guess they're all gonna play in the game and Ty Wulu was like, no, 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 baby steps, baby steps. Let's not get ahead of ourselves on them actually all showing up to work at once. Finally, the website Mayor's Manor is reporting that the Kings' Quinton Byfield, he will not return to the NHL for at least another week. This is some sort of roster freeze that's going on in the NHL during the holidays. The roster freeze ends on December 28th. And with any luck, he's recaptured his form while taking a trip to the Inland Empire. 
those are words very rarely uttered in the English language. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I revived my life by going to the Inland Empire. Would you let me know what you think? Let me know what you think about how USC and UCLA has started to rebuild their rosters for the 2023 football season. Let me know what you think about Matthew Stafford. I think that's a big piece to the Rams' immediate future. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelino as we talk LA sports here every single day, no matter where the hell I am. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Take care.